What's going on guys? It's Rachel back again with another amazing video from Makers Gonna Learn, your ultimate die cutting community. And today we're talking all things you should not do when you iron on wood. If you have been around with us for a while or you are pretty, you know, into the cricket side of things, then you will know that iron on wood is a thing and it's a thing that a lot of people do and there is a right and a wrong way to do it. There's a lot of different tips and tricks when ironing on wood. If you guys are interested in a how-to video on it, I will link it down below. Um, if you're interested in sealing your wood projects that you add HTV to, uh, I will link that below as well. There's a lot of uh, fun training to do but today we're going to be talking about things you might be doing wrong and what to steer clear of when choosing wood for a project when deciding to go ahead and iron on your projects and some tips to make sure that you guys get project successes and not project fails. Before we get started, if you guys happen to be interested in learning a lot about your Cricut, we would love to welcome you to Makers Gonna Learn and give you a five free day Cricut course all about mastering your Cricut. It is an amazing curriculum that I developed. It has 30 amazing videos and we would love to give you five for free. If you're interested, go ahead and click the very first link in the description below. And if you want to know more about Makers Gonna Learn and jump right in feet first, then we would love to welcome you to our yearly membership. We have thousands of cut files, hundreds of fonts, a free commercial license, a private Facebook group, amazing tutorials. We have a lot of training for beginners and so much more. Check it out over there for endless inspiration, education, and motivation. The biggest thing that we have probably mentioned in all of our iron on wood videos is to be picky with your wood. You cannot buy cheap wood. You cannot buy just lumber and try and iron it on as is. There are steps that you have to take, no matter how high quality your wood is, to make sure that it is primed and ready to be ironed on. There's a lot of different factors that go into the type of wood you have, um, where you buy it from, how expensive it was, if it's pressure treated or anything like that. There's just a lot to think about and go over when it comes to choosing your wood. So we are here to give you guys some helpful tips. You need to always look for super smooth and flat wood. If you're going somewhere like Lowe's or Home Depot or your local home improvement store to find a big piece of wood that you're gonna maybe cut down to use as frame backings or something like that, it's gonna be really hard to find an eight or 10 foot piece of wood that's not warped somewhere. So if you're bulk buying, please just try and be super mindful about the wood that you choose being as straight as possible and as smooth as possible. You don't want a bunch of knots or divots in the wood. You really want to get a good quality wood, especially if you're using it for a project with your Cricut. You want to be super picky, so make sure you do buy a little bit of a better quality wood. It will pay off in the end, I promise. Whether you get your wood from the home improvement store or you buy nice pre-packaged, pre-cut, pre-sanded wood at the craft store like this, we still recommend sanding no matter what. Now this is just a plank of wood that we have um, went ahead and cut, sanded and stained. And guys, I wish that you could feel this through the camera because it is so smooth. I would be super confident even applying regular adhesive vinyl to this. That is how smooth it is. And that is amazing, that's what you want. You want to be super picky. Even with things like this, which is a um, pre-sanded, pre-cut, really nice quality wood round, I would still recommend lightly sanding this. Now, when you guys think sanding, that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. That doesn't necessarily mean that I need you guys to plug in your sander and sand it that way. Some woods only require a very light sanding with a sanding block. We really love sanding blocks. We think they're definitely worth the investment. Um, because even though they're a little more expensive, they're so much easier to hold. You can really maximize um, your money by uh, sanding on all of the sides of these. Uh, whereas if you buy like some sandpaper from the dollar store, um, it might not be the best quality. Uh, the grit could be a little bit off for you because if you're anything like me, I don't know a ton about sandpaper grit. Um, but anyways, if you choose to sand, please just know that it's just a light sanding unless you have something like um, an eight, 10 foot tall piece of lumber from the hardware store or excuse me, the home improvement store, you're gonna need to cut that sand it pretty well. I would get the big sander out for that. Or let's just say you already have some wood. It might not be the best quality. You could make the best of it and sand it really, really well and cut it nice and just make sure all the edges are nice and smooth and s take a lot of extra time sanding it and you might be able to still get a super successful uh, project out of that type of wood. So really we wanna make sure that you 
guys are maximizing the what you have and having good knowledge to go the next time and maybe get a better quality wood. So no matter how you get it, where you get it, the state that it's in, you're gonna need to sand, whether that be light or heavy, you still will need to sand these. Even this one, before we stain it, we will sand it. Sanding is so important for iron on wood projects. Another thing we wanna steer you guys away from is trying to iron on freshly stained or painted wood. You are gonna have a project fail very quickly if you do this. Now, I know a lot of us are impatient crafters. We are here, so this is a really hard thing to uh, master, but it is very necessary for the success of all of your projects. I'm not saying if you only wait three hours that you'll 100% for sure have a fail. I'm just saying if there is a way for you to allow this more time to dry in order to get a way more successful project, then that is what we're going to recommend to you. And that is what we recommend 100%. Do it the night before. We recommend letting this guy set at least a night. Um, the same being said about paint, you have to be super careful with your paint. With stain, you do not want to stain it within a couple hours of, or excuse me, you don't want to iron on it a couple hours within staining it. You're going to have yourself a project fail. We don't want that. And what that kind of looks like, because you guys are probably wondering, well, what exactly does the project fail look like? Does it just not adhere? Not only does it not adhere, but where the wood is still kind of moist because of that stain, it's going to bubble up and not want to adhere and kind of get all gunky. And then your stain that is not yet dry will seep up onto your HTV and the adhesive on that HTV and look terrible. I've had it happen time and time again, trying to uh, meet a deadline or make a project super quick. And it's not worth it, guys. You need to really be patient and make sure that you're doing this to the best of your ability to save you time and money in the long run. So no matter if you are sanding um, and then staining or sanding and painting, you're going to want to allow these to dry. Now, while we're on the topic of painting, there is a brand of paint that does not do well with iron on. There could be more. We haven't tested more. This is just one that we steer clear of, and that is the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint. We have this in black and white. It was on sale at Hobby Lobby for us, so we got it one day and used it on some wood rounds and things like that, and the HTV does not want to stick to it at all. Now, we have used other types of multi-surface paint like Deco Art Americana uh, Multi-Surface Paint, and it has worked fine, but if you guys like Folk Art, get the acrylic kind and not the multi-surface kind um, because it does not like HTV. So if you need to write that down or something, we want to save you guys time. I actually made a project for one of my best friends. It was a big like 23 inch wood round and I painted the whole thing white and I was putting some gold and some pink uh, HTV on it for a friend of hers baby shower. and. I almost had a project fail, guys. It was super, super sad. I pushed through, but I would absolutely not recommend it again. Um, so we do like brand other brands, uh, like we said, Americana. This is Americana's premium acrylic paint. This gigantic thing was $8.99 at Hobby Lobby, and we're gonna be able to use this for a long time. So if you're, if you're in the market for a new paint and you're looking around for one, we do like that brand. You can also use chalky paints or whatever type of paint that you want. Just be wary of this kind because we do have some fails um, with that. So uh, do, please note, if you do use paint, again, let it dry overnight. You want it to dry um, super, super slowly, let it do its thing. A lot of you might say, well, I'm just gonna speed up the process and use a heat gun on my uh, stained wood, or I'll use a heat gun on my painted wood. Well, that's fine. You'll be able to dry that stain that's on the very top and the paint that's on the very top. But underneath that very, very top layer of paint and stain, there will still be a moist stain or paint that needs time to dry and cure properly. And if you're not going to give it that, then you might very well have a project fail, especially with paint. Paint is super easy to dry on the top, but then it takes a lot longer to dry those under layers of paint, especially if you have a wood piece that you need to add more than one coat on. You really need to allow the dry time to reflect how well you want your project to turn out. So overnight, a couple of days in advance, it can't be too in advance that you paint or stain these. So if you know you have orders coming in if you own an Etsy shop or something like that and you know you get orders for specific colors of wood all the time, I would pre-paint several of those and just let them be chill in there, uh, dried and ready to use when your next order comes in. Uh, things like that really does help that process. Another no-no when ironing on wood is using a large heat plate. You do not want to use a heat plate that is very large because it does not well cover your surface area of your wood. It does not do that very well. Um, if you place this 10 by 12 
easy press on this round of wood because wood is never perfectly flat and smooth it's only going to adhere well in certain areas because that heat plate is too big it can't fit in those small areas as the mini wood um same way if you have another type of wood that maybe has some little uh dips in it or that you can definitely see is um, a little bit warped. This wood is warped this way. I can tell by looking at it. And if you wanted to add HTV to that, if you wanted to put the big easy press on there, because it's curved like this, that easy press will only hit the edges because it doesn't have any room. The, the pl heat plate cannot mold to the wood. So we do not at all recommend using larger heat plates for your iron on wood projects. Now, the only pro to the larger heat plates is that you are not supposed to move those around because that is another thing we wanted to discuss is heat and how you move it around because both can be tricky. It's really like this perfect dance that you have to do when ironing on wood. There's a lot of fails that you might go through before you get a success, but it's all about getting that technique down and making sure that your technique is flawless and that you're doing your wood to the best of your ability, making sure that it's sanded and stained and had plenty of time to dry and all that good stuff. So we definitely recommend the easy press mini with its little heat plate if this wood is a little bit warped because it's so small it can still very easily get into all those little grooves um but the only con about this is that it is meant to be moved around. It has that double ceramic coated heat plate to allow it to kind of slide around the project. So if you have an Easy Press Mini, I would 100% use it. If you have a large Easy Press with the big heat plate, do not use it. Not the six by seven, not the nine by nine, not the 10 by 12. I would not recommend it. Can you do it? Is it possible? Sure. Will it take forever? Probably. Will all of your HTV be heated to the wood? Doubt it. But if you want to try it, you can try it. We've always had success with our Easy Press Mini when we followed all of these steps, though. Um, so I was mentioning about heat. If you have your Easy Press too high, which I'll let you guys know for wood, it's recommended to be about 300 degrees and no hotter. Um, when you have your Easy Press set too high, so for the Mini, that is one heat setting, the first heat setting. Uh, with this, you will actually be able to change that temperature manually. So if you have your heat too high, it will melt your HTV your HV will start to kind of spread out and not look good at all. You could burn the adhesive, which means it's just not going to work properly. And on the flip side of that, if you move it around while it's trying to adhere, you will 100% move letters around, slide letters around. The thing with wood that I want everybody to understand is that HTV bonds with fabric. That is what HTV is meant for. It's meant for cotton and tote bags and you know t-shirts and onesies and things like that. Fabric. When that HTV gets applied with heat, it bonds to that fabric. With wood, you have a flat surface, a hard surface. It's not very porous. It's not you know it does not fibrous. And then you have HTV. When you heat that HTV to it, the only thing that is keeping that HTV on that wood is the adhesive once it's cooled down. That will make enough of an adhesion for it to stay just like it is. However, if you guys have it super hot and you're trying to heat your HTV down, it doesn't have anywhere to bind to like it would a shirt. So if you heat it up and you're moving your easy press around too much, it will kind of slip and slide around once that adhesive starts to warm up and melt down to where it would bond with that material. It's just kind of on the wood. That's when it'll start slipping and sliding away. So you have to be super careful, which now I say it's a con because you do have to move this around but it's actually a good thing because you can see if that's happening if you had a larger easy press if you had this even the six by seven or the nine by nine you would still not be able to tell okay am i moving anything around under there you could say i'm holding it flat but really you're making little bitty movements and may not even be knowing it so with this guy as you're moving it around the wood you can easily see if anything is happening to your image that you're trying to transfer in a HTV, you can see which parts look like they're adhering well, which parts are not adhering well. I just love the control that you have with the mini. So we would 100% recommend using the mini for your iron on wood projects. It does a, an exceptional job and we do not recommend anything else. Now there are some videos on our channel where Tanner did iron on wood with the larger easy press. That was only because the mini wasn't out yet. We had to make do with what we had and it worked okay. But with the mini out, we don't recommend anything else now because it's so flawless. If you guys follow these tips and tricks and steer clear of the no-nos that we talked about in this video, you are gonna be on your way to 
to several successful iron on wood projects. I hope that you all did enjoy this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that bell to get notified for all the amazing videos we have coming out for you. And leave us a comment down below if you have any questions. If you would like to know how to iron on wood, the logistics about it, if you wanna know why we think you should iron on wood, a little comparison between regular vinyl and regular uh, HTV when ironing on wood, I will go ahead and link that video down for you as well. And don't forget guys to click the link in the description below to see what you're missing by not being a member of Makers Gonna Learn. We have thousands of cut files, hundreds of fonts, and so much inspiration, education, and motivation we would like to share with you die cutting crafters. Thanks so much guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.